The Prophet ﷺ said this ummah is one body. When one body is affected, the other body reacts with fever and sleepless nights. And it's, it's part and parcel of Iman for us to feel pain. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. My dearest brothers and sisters in Islam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and bless our month. And may he accept what has passed and bless what remains. Ameen. Uh, MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Ramadan is always a special month and I welcome you all to our Ramadan series for this Ramadan 1445. We did call it Ramadan nights and then I traveled to another part of the world and the night became day. So Alhamdulillah, um, it is Ramadan days as uh, it currently goes. Uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, um, as we experience this Ramadan, perhaps we are experiencing it at the most difficult time in our lives. Perhaps this Ramadan has come um, during the most difficult year of our lives. Well, at least in my life, I don't recall a harder year that the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has gone through, at least in my lifetime. Um, you know, uh, we, if, we, if we just reel back uh, the weeks and months, uh, we had uh, not so long ago the Turkish earthquake and that brought all sorts of worry and concern and um, you know, uh, no doubt opportunity as well in terms of being there for the Ummah, to the Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then we had um, the Libyan floods and then the Moroccan uh, earthquake, or perhaps it was the Moroccan earthquake and then the Libyan floods, it was really back to back. And then the debacle in Sudan, and Allah make everything easier there, that's still going on. And as this is going on, um, in the front of our minds and not the back of our minds, we have the plight of, of the, our brothers and sisters in Kashmir. I mean, even though, um, you know, their reality isn't being broadcasted to our phones and our screens, honestly, they are going through a great trial. May Allah make things easy for them. I mean, and uh, we have the Rohingya, subhanAllah, still displaced in their numbers uh, in Bangladesh and other lands. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. Um, and then uh, we have the political strife in Pakistan and then Gaza happened, SubhanAllah. So it's been one thing after the other. And, and uh, you know, we obviously need to live upon Upon having this ummah mindset, this um, mindset whereby we are uh, we, we are not individuals, but we are part of a collective. And as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, this ummah is one body. When one body is affected, the other body reacts with fever and sleepless nights. And uh, it's 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 part and parcel of iman for us to feel pain. So it has been a painful year. But the purpose of this video is not to paint uh, gloom and doom, because this ummah is an ummah of resilience. It is an ummah. Uh, that lasts. It is an ummah that is sustained. It is an ummah that will rise above and not be risen over. This is an ummah uh, that knows that a seedling has to penetrate the darkness and hardness of the soil patiently um, with perseverance until it finally breaches um, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the surface of the soil before it, alhamdulillah, tastes the warmth of uh, the sun and the coolness of the air and it will sprout and grow into a tree that will last more than a century. Subhanallah. This is the reality of this ummah. And accordingly, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa likened the people of Iman to the date palm. MashaAllah, tabarakallah, this firm standing structure, we must call it a structure, uh, amidst the desert, subhanAllah, um, living through desert storms, living through dry spells that last months, subhanAllah, but it stands tall, it stands strong, it gives shade, and in the hottest time of the year, it produces uh, dates, subhanAllah, dates filled with nutrition and the necessary sugars to sustain life. This is the description that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam likened the people of Iman to. This is the parallel he ran between the believers and the date palm. So this is who we are, uh, my dear brother and sister in Islam. And as such, we are in a month that we call Kareem, we call generous. And this Ummah is indeed a generous Ummah. It is generous in all aspects because this is an Ummah that doesn't see the O of obstacle. It is the Ummah that sees the O of opportunity 
amidst every obstacle. It is the Ummah that sees the opportunity to build Jannah when an obstacle presents itself. And an opportunity to build Jannah in a way like never before. Because when things are normal, we build Jannah in a particular way. But when push comes to shove and we stand up and be counted, we build Jannah as well, albeit in a different way. This is the reality of the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, the month of Ramadan is kareem and generous, and it is a month that comes to remind us that we shouldn't be in a sabbatical. The month of Ramadan is in a month in which we go to sleep, subhanAllah, and we limit our activities because we feel that we are away from food and drink and our sleep patterns have been affected. Rather, this is a month that uh, is not just business as usual, but subhanAllah, even more business than usual. And that is the business with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Akhirah, the Battle of Badr was fought during the month of Ramadan. And the opening of Mecca, it is said to have been during the month of Ramadan. We don't see, subhanAllah, messages from the Sahaba that can Ramadan be postponed or can uh, the opening of Mecca be postponed because it is Ramadan. Ramadan comes and calibrates us end to end. It's an end to end calibration, subhanAllah. It's come to tell us that, O oh Muhammad, Ramadan is not a month to be in a sabbatical and your life is not one that allows you to be in a sabbatical. Islam needs you, the Muslims need you, and we are all collectively part of the solution. And I want to tie this message to that earlier presentation we gave on that verse in Surah At-Tawbah, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in effect teaches us that there's no retirement age in Islam. This is the reminder for this episode and the message for today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our past and bless and inspire our futures and make us a people that are counted, a people that rise and are never risen over. I love you all for the sake of Allah. Until next time, salamu alaykum wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuh.